Hey. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I'm seeing some video and I'm seeing black screen here. Yeah. <clears throat> Perry, you're sideways. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. My video doesn't want to start for some reason. I'm going to log out and come back in. Okay. If I can. Am I straight now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I think I know why. Hold on. We have three Zoom meetings happening right now in my house. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we we have two here. <laughs> I'm I'm fingers crossed the internet. Yep. Hello, everybody. Hi. That's Sam? It is. How are you? There we go. You guys all that? Yeah. That's better. Excellent. Perry, Barbara. Hey, Tom, how are you guys doing? All hey, right. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Good. You hanging in there? It's not too bad. It's been a little crazy. It's been definitely a bumpy, uh, bumpy road, but mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every day brings new challenges. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. How are you guys keeping the um, facilities running? Or I guess they're mostly in, like sleep mode at the moment. Yeah. What I've done is I've kind of cut back on everybody a little bit, just to kind of uh, spread them out shift wise, and you know, so there's not so many working together at one time. Mm -hmm. um, but we're continuing with disinfecting spaces because teachers continue to come in and out of the building for needs for teaching mm -hmm. outside of the school. So yeah. I, we've, we've backed off on the cleaning part, um, you know, because originally we were looking at doing summertime cleaning and just getting a head start on it. But we've backed off that and just kind of kept up with the uh, you know, just disinfecting everywhere, touch surfaces, door handles, doorknobs, photocopy mm -hmm. machines, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we'll, we'll wait and see where this goes. I, I, in my opinion, I believe the school year is over. <laughs> um, yep. But, you know, I, we got to wait and see until we get an official call for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just, I keep telling people, when things go back online, they're gonna, they're gonna. I would assume they would go back online, kind of backwards, and in, in the way that they stop doing things. So I, I would think, you know, you'd see stores open up first, bars and restaurants, and then do your schools last. You know, mm -hmm. with the, anything where you have the uh, highly populated area consolidated into one space. So, I mean, that makes the most sense to me. And I think at this point until we get over this and start looking a little better, uh, I think the school year is going to be yeah. uh, over. Mm -hmm. And and now I'm, I'm seeing today that I guess Japan is experiencing a second wave. So, yeah. <laughs> Call me Mr. Sunshine, you know? <laughs> maybe you need no more school for years now. I don't know. Yeah, I've, I've seen those, those curves. Like, there are two humps. You know, yeah. one in the spring. And warm in the fall. As soon as they miss September, we'll be doing this all over again. Yeah. But I, I, I mean, at least this way, I think, you know, this is considered as a little bit of a, a tough training period, but, you know, everybody, I think, will be a little more prepped for a second wave. I, I, I know I'm going to view things a little differently, and the, and the little sanitation rags they give you at the um, supermarkets and things like that, you know, I always walk by those before, you know. Who needs to sanitize the shopping cart? Well, I do it all the time. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Different well, now masks, I guess, are, yeah. Okay. 
Anybody else joining us from the outside? No. It doesn't appear. No. Just, us, just us eager beavers. Nah. Perfect. <sighs> um, good. Well, let's call this meeting to order, shall we? Like we're, we're all present. Um, I see Barbara, Tom, Richard, Carrie, Sam Whitman, John, Harry, and myself. Sounds All like present. one of those kids' shows. I see, yeah, I see him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, who, who doesn't belong? That's the question, right? Well, it yeah. looks like you think of the Brady Bunch on my screen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, no, it, I, yeah. I, I, it's, it's remarkable that we've gotten to this point already. Um, it seems like, aside from having to, you know, skip a week when we couldn't meet in person, um, we're pretty much on track. I don't know. It was. I'm curious to see what you guys think about if, in the big picture, if this project is on track um, in light of the developments all over the planet. Um, but I feel pretty good that we've already got the RFP out. We've had a successful site visit, I think, from what I understand. Um, we've got a manageable number of proposals that came in. And, um, uh, and I'll be curious to, to kind of, you know, hear from, um, from y'all kind of what you think about how they slice the dice. But, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, Tom and Sam and, and Richard and others, you know, put a lot of work into getting us to this point at least in terms of understanding where our options are. Um, so I'm excited. I think it's the only agenda item. Oh yeah, John. So I was just going to suggest a possible outline for the, um, just rough for what, there's a lot of material. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that you sort of outlined some of it. So what I was going to suggest is we spend a little time just talking, um, about the situation and what our overall project sort of concerns are now that we've looked through the material. I really appreciated the material that you put together, Tom. It was really great to do that. I think that that piece also brings a lot to the fore because I think your recommendation at the end of getting to a short list of bidders and then sort of revisiting that because the bidders may all be someplace different now too. Um, I thought that made a lot of sense. So maybe some global concerns and then we can talk about the specific information uh, and how we might want to get down to a short list um, to, to have those conversations and, and see, see where we're at. So that's sort of a, what, what I think would might be helpful. Mm -hmm. And what I was thinking that would be helpful, I put it some in the email would be to try and get a view of what else we want to ask people to go back to what other, and I, I know, uh, you know Richard's done some great additional analysis on top of what I started. What do we want, what additional analysis or metrics do we want to look at to evaluate? And as I said, because I'm on the board of Amoresco and I've got nothing to do with this decision. If you guys are going to start talking about individual bids or a short list, I'll put everything on mute and go away for a while because I don't think I should be part of that. Um, in any way, shape, or form, just for appearance's sake, even though it doesn't matter at all in terms of the size of the company in this project. Mine was more about criteria to get there, Tom, than, than actually doing that. Okay. But if you guys want to have a chat about even getting down to who do you invite back or thinking about a short list, I would just absent myself from that discussion. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate you thinking about that. Um, yeah, let's, let's, do, let's do this, you know, as cleanly as possible uh, so that we can avoid <laughs> avoid the case of, you know, somebody who felt spurned having, you know, any any legitimate reason to you know, yeah. come back and, you know, and give us a hard time. Um, hey, hey, by the way, you. just uh, as I thought about this thing, you the first question or the first thing, Sam, you were talking about is how do you feel where we are and all that. I think it's kind of important to think about where, where everybody, our bidders think they are at this point, because I've been through the weeds with MPUC the last couple of weeks and knowing that everything's been moved back, um, it may be a question for them based on the, this situation the, with the, uh, the virus. Um, where do you think can, can, you are at this point compared to where you were when you did the bid in the first place? 
may just be a general question to ask, okay? Can we put that on a question to ask every single bidder? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. yeah. And, and I can give you an update from, from at least that point of view as, as a developer. We have some challenges, but, but everybody's pushing as hard as they can in this program. So everybody's anticipating optimistically, uh, optimistic that they will meet their own guidelines but they also realize that there are some, there are obviously some shortages. For instance, um, <clears throat> I know that Amir is, is, is really shutting down in terms of if they're doing their studies at this point. CMP is doing a much better job. So those who are in that territory are concerned about that. And, and so there are some, some little cracks in the wall, but I think that um, that would be interesting, interesting to get their viewpoints, yeah. What, and what I can say on the financing side, um, I, I've spoken sort of just in the last couple of days with the number of people, it, it tends to be for the larger sort of utility scale projects, but um, all the people who buy tax equity, the big banks, people that are financing this are all moving forward. Um, they're anticipating doing deals. Um, you know, the big thing is, you know, by the end of the year, you know, paying, you know, usually just ordering panels, you can say you've bought them to get into the tax credit and everyone is proceeding. I don't know what people are saying about, um, um, you know, when these things will actually get in construction, but people are proceeding as if they're gonna meet the safe harbors and there doesn't seem to be a, a drop off yet in the financing activity. Is, is there any thought that in terms of you could get better pricing? Yeah. I think no one knows there, you know, there are arguments that says maybe, but I think a lot of the people for this year have already pre-ordered panels. Mm -hmm. And then you got on the other side, you've got arguments that, you know, is China going to be able to export? Are they going to be in greater demand? So I think that's unclear. Yeah. Cause that was just something not, I didn't have an answer to it, but I thought we should at least discuss whether or not we think our bids are still, are they valid? Are they valid, or should we ask bidders for to refresh them or whatever? Um, well, I think that that's part of the question is to yeah. if they think the atmosphere has changed and, and and is there something that would affect it? Because uh, one of the things of my concern was um, that uh, when we ask for cost sharing, we've also asked them to not to give us a definitive bid to a certain degree. So um, I was struggling with the idea that we had, we had one of our participants, uh, our responders, talk about a tremendous, a, a quite a big, uh, a, a, there, were, there was a big difference between what they would do in prevailing wage and unprevailing wage and another bidder had four or five different scenarios and then they had a base case scenario. Yes, okay. you wanna see these people? Hi. Hello, let's say, hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> What's your name? This is Carl. Carl hey, loves Carl. Zoom meetings. Carl loves Zoom meetings. Hi, Carl. Excellent. Does he want to join the committee? <laughs> he's, been, he's, well, he's become quite an energy consultant in the past couple of weeks. Sure but I think is. it's bath time, sure right? Is. Why don't you go have a bath? Oh. As far, uh, by the way, as far as prices of, of panels are concerned, um, there is anticipation that of um, panels that are 400 watts or below are going to start seeing a glut in the market because China is producing quite a bit right now. And we don't know what the market's going to look like. Anyway, let's get back on track, I think. Good idea. Let's go. Yes. Okay. So, um, for those who've done the, the most of the evaluation at this, you know, at this point, was there a proposal? I probably I didn't kind of you know think about this beforehand, but um, is there a process that would make the most sense to value what we have? Do you want to kind of look at the materials that we've developed, the the you know the, the PowerPoint and the various um, evaluation tools, we'll kind of go through each, each proposal? Um, Tom, maybe you want to show us your. Uh, you know the, the 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 deck that you created, and you can walk through that. Yeah, I can I can put that up and share it if we want to go through it, and then um, I could also probably share also because I've got a, what Richard did as well. Mm -hmm. So um, let me 
see if I can get to the share screen bit here. That's not what I wanted. Thanks. You're welcome. While we're waiting for Tom, um, you know, as a general consideration, um, you know, are there are other things. How much weight are we going to have for um, such items as experience in Maine, experience on landfills? I mean, those types of, we've got a lot of information on the uh, quantitative information on yeah. uh, production and uh, costs and stuff. But what about uh, the other aspects that um, go into this decision? For instance? You know, yeah. Do we care whether they can not, how much experience the people have in Maine? Do we care for dealing with a local a local versus someone who's uh, farther away? Uh, are those types of criteria at least ought to be? Yeah, does the town that? have any guidance on that? I feel like we've asked this and maybe didn't, found out they didn't, but is there, is there any, like Perry, when you do other procurements, is, is experience in, like, how much is that? Weighted. I I didn't get the first part. Like when you do other procurements, how much is experience in Maine? Is that? Uh, I mean, I I put a lot of weight in it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know how the town views it, but I I would assume they would be on board with what I'm thinking. You know, it's um, I I wouldn't want to hire somebody that does not have the experience with it. You think Can specifically in Maine you're asking or just experience with the landfill? Uh, I'd say both, really. Because you don't have a lot of Maine history, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's your problem. And, um, and, and, and one, of the, one of the respondents has, you know, I wouldn't say dominating, but gets a lot of projects without any kind of RFP. And, and that respondent wasn't, wasn't one of our... Um, as far as I'm concerned, one of our top people. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Can everyone see the screen I'm sharing? Uh, no. Yeah. No. No, mine says your meeting should start in a few seconds. Yeah. Let's Is see. that what you're sharing? No. That's what I see. Seeing the same. Hold on. Uh, also, uh, just Perry, just to kind of put some more color into that, um, people who I've talked to, even though you're, most of them who have EPC experience on their own usually are end up being uh, contractors and hire local at the same time, right? Uh, almost to the almost to the T. And those who don't hire local too in the same way. Okay, so if you have national EPC companies like like who didn't participate here, Borrego, they hire local groups, uh, local contractors. Okay. Hmm. Do it. A general question I had um, is, uh, people that are more experienced this than I am, uh, when I dealt with capital, like, when I dealt with capital equipment, deal with capital equipment, I'm used to seeing some sort of guarantees, uh, performance bond. Um, right. I see none of that in any of the quotes, unless I missed them. Is that something that's not common in this industry? I, I can tell you we the could, town will require it. Yeah. So a what project, kind of? Yeah, a project of this size, um, I did have that documented. I That's probably sitting on my desk at work. But yeah, it, it's a certain percentage that's required down. And then, you know, they, they, they that percentage goes lower and lower as the project moves along. Did we have that as part of our condition, probably bond, putting up a bond, or did we not? I I believe it was in the RFP. I believe too. I thought so too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking that that that's that 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 was part of their equation. I think one of the respondents tangent mentioned bonding as as a part as one of in theirs, but but if they didn't, I think that a lot of the stuff and. and because we're all trying to struggle to get apples to apples, what we're trying to do to a certain degree. Yeah. And I think when we get to a, a, a short list where, there's, where there, you can see a big difference in price or cost, whatever, 
you can start talking about some of that as well. And that could really make or break the, make the final decisions because bonding is not cheap. Well, when I look back, I, some of them may have included that in their financing cost. I, yeah, I'm I not they sure. Did too. I think they did. Yeah. And I know certainly Amoresco referred to surety bonds that it had available, but mm. uh, not for this particular project. Can people see the screen now? Yes. I see summary. Right. Okay. Is that what you're looking for, Tom? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Slide two. Right. Okay. We're on. So just to, to kind of walk through this a little bit, um, some of the conclusions I think Sam's noticed, Sam Lipman noticed this. Um, you know, it's a little bit, we need more data to kind of get down to some real costs. Um, we need to ask clarifications for most people. We've got that list. Um, there's the one non-compliant bid from HEP Energy, which clearly is, you know, taking down a bunch of trees. And I think one of the questions for people is, do you even just, you just want to say thank you and move on? Um, it seemed that's looked to be that no one read the bid and just said, we want to throw something in here. Um, when you look at, the interesting one that surprised me is that paying a higher price up front would suggest that we would save more money over time. Um, and even though there's a wide range of pricing, when you look at the CapEx information, the cost information we have, um, it doesn't necessarily suggest that people with a higher CapEx are charging more for the project. So it's probably more related to their cost of capital. Um, and I think the other one that comes back is, you know, it's one bidder, but that's Amoresco, you know, has an option that we just buy from not on the town landfill site. And that would provide the least cost option to the town, which is just an interesting one to think about, you know, whether as part of this, you go with, you know, just the landfill or should the town be looking at the balance of its energy needs. If we do the landfill from joining another project outside of the town, to possibly save costs. So that was interesting. If you look at the next slide on bidders and experience, um, you know, the one thing I'll say that, you know, the people we've got, everyone's got experience, probably everyone can do it. Looking at the financial backing, um, the only one that I'm not so sure about, the real financial backing would be the German-based group, HAP Energy, the other ones, I think, from the information we have, probably can all finance something of this size. You do see the relevant experience of the projects, so the, the column PV experience megawatts. So what that's saying is Amoresco has done 468 projects for 180 megawatts. Citizen has done 40 projects for 175 and megawatts and so on. And then the, the landfill experience um, you've got Amoresco has been on 16 landfills with 20 megawatts of capacity, Citizens 15 with 45 megawatts of capacity, and on and on. And I think, oh, I have to go back on Encore. I'm sorry, there's a typo there. The HEP Energy says they've secured, they've done two landfill sites. Those are both projected. It's unclear where they are in their development stage, but those have not been built. Yeah. Yeah, those one of them is in Waterville, a Fairfield Waterville area, and it has not been built. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you kind of have to deem them as as no experience. Um, I can't remember. Did they have good pricing or not? No, they weren't even. They weren't even. They were so non-compliant. They decided not to. They're the ones that want to basically put is, down every tree on the site. Oh, okay. okay. So they're just they're just eliminated then. Uh, I right? think where they are. I yeah. Think they are. Yeah. 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 Well, so the, the question do is, do you want to go a certain amount? Yeah, yeah. The question is, do you want to go back and ask them for a compliant bid or not? No, I, I don't. I don't. But anyone else can weigh in. I, I don't think it's worth it because we have all these other ones who are compliant and are. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. What, at this point, do we just want to consider just bids that that are using the landfill only? And just look at those bids. Yeah. The only game changer I saw, you know, because of the disruption that we're seeing in other areas and the, the delay that would cause getting the town uh, you know, 
expanded, expand something beyond what the landfill site. The only exception to that that doesn't cause a disruption uh, to an area is the is the Am Amoresco, the, the Lewiston option. Yeah. Which, yeah. uh, so that, that no, I like the idea of just doing the landfill and then yeah. possibly doing the Amoresco thing or so, um, possibly uh, having another developer tie us into whatever. right and, and and to let me piggyback on that there's at least been four of the developers who who suggested the same thing already about taking one of their sites other sites and they were and and they definitely it were just as cost effective so when we're talking about um even talking about uh price versus the amount of power that that one can generate given Maybe we, we take the best price and get the rest from some land. So we either got other decisions to make as well, but you're right. I think that's it. We go with the landfill. It's easiest to work with. Um, and just going back to HEP for a second, if, a, if someone is giving us, is interested in doing this project, they would have done both, and they have, both a landfill and another pr expanded project. That would be the way of doing that. Why I don't like HEP because they just completely threw out the landfill possibility completely. Okay, <laughs> so, we'll let you so I, I think some of the discussion around what we want to consider as the project is better to go through after we've been through the presentation because there's a there's a couple of different factors that relate to what we want to do project wise that I think will help us narrow it down. But I think going through the the whole analysis versus is, is useful. Yeah. Okay, and then we'll come back to Richard's thing in a minute. So that's that. I think here, I apologize a little bit slow, but I think everyone's seen the variants and we've got code names on all of those. Um, and, you know, this is sort of, you know, some of the basic pricing and the like and some of the analysis. We should skip to the public version uh, right now because this is going to get posted. Yeah, there we go. There's the public version. Good. So the first slide of them, I don't know if anyone wants to bother going through this. I think you all have a copy of it. Um, and Richard, thank you for noting a couple of things. I think I sent the model back. I think I've fixed a couple little errors that I found, but if there are any more, I'd appreciate it. So um, I, I just have a question um, and I, I should look at the spreadsheet, um, but how did we figure out the NPV of the savings? Okay, so what, what I what did, was your forecast for that? So what I did, and we can do this another way if we know what the kilowatt hour price is that we're currently paying yeah. um, under the town's contract. What I did is I took the current rate that everyone seems to be pricing off of, which is twelve point seven something cents a kilowatt yeah. hour yeah. Yeah. from CMP. Yeah. yeah. So I took that and I inflated that at 2% per year for 20 years. Okay. Then I took whatever the tariff was, either uninflated or whatever inflation tariff they had, and then I discounted everything back at 8% discount okay. rate to come to the savings. Okay. You know, we can argue, and I can rerun the model with any kind of inflation we want on the CMP model. We can change the discount rate on the savings, but that seemed to be a, you know, I think, Carrie, you probably know as well as I do, everyone tends to use kind of an 8% discount rate. Yeah, no, that's that. fine. That's fine. I was just trying to figure out how we got the forecast to, uh, yeah. you know, to save against. And the, and the average is then taking the average over every single year. Um, and then when you look at it, you know, the ones that are the higher price up front with no adder, don't generate that much savings in the short term, but over the long term, they generate higher amounts of savings. Um, so, you know, it's, you know, a lot of that, some of that savings is back ended. Yeah. You know, and the other one that stood out here was Tango 2, uh, which is with the town keeping the racks that we actually lose money. Not much over time, but clearly not a very competitive offer. And then, it, 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 it struck me there was a, quite a variation as well in how people seem to be valuing the RECs. I yeah. didn't, 
I just I didn't do the detailed math, but just back of the envelope, there seemed to be wide variation in terms of how those are being valued by the different parties. Yeah. I mean, the one thing I could do is go back and add in to, you know, in theory, how much they're valuing the recs in each case. I just didn't, I didn't get that. So that's the first set of the bids. This is the second set of, you know, this is the second one. I just couldn't get them all on one sheet. Um, and this gives you some idea of that, you know, the, the clearly one here is, you know, bitter Charlie um, has this concept and Perry, maybe you can guide us on this one about bidding without the prevailing wage. And what we don't know is if everyone else bid with prevailing wage or without prevailing wage, and does the town have a prevailing wage requirement? What does I, it mean to bid without the prevailing wage? What? I didn't quite get that. So I'm, I'm not an expert in how all this prevailing wage stuff works, but it's presumably the bidder Charlie is saying, we bring in a bunch of probably non-union, non-people wage, and we can build this for a whole lot less. And I just don't know what the town's policy is vis-a-vis -vis prevailing wage. And again, what we don't know is if the other bidders bid prevailing wage or yeah. didn't. Yeah. This was not a variant I ever expected to see. Yeah, and isn't it very hard to find, I mean, maybe it isn't today, but when they made the bids, um, isn't the labor market very tight? Well, it, the point is, Carrie, that they were the only ones to bring it up, and I think it's a valid point. And and um, I, I, one of my questions to ask them to, to, to quantify that, because I, I know that they just came off a prevail, this particular developer just came off a prevailing wage project in New Jersey, this isn't gonna be the same thing. So um, I wanted to see what they had for insight and what they were thinking of, and perhaps we need to ask that question to other people as well. It, it may be a big, really big difference in, in other states where I'm not sure that in Maine, it might not be that big a difference. Well, that's why I asked them to quantify it. I want to see what kind of research I, they've done on this thing. I know in Massachusetts, the rules around, you know, electrical, you know, the electrical workers and contractors are such that Massachusetts projects are really expensive because you got to go union and um, fairly high prevailing wage. But again, Perry, is there is there any view from the town standpoint? Are we required to do prevailing wage? Is it? I we don't we don't have any prevailing wage requirement. I I have never bid anything whether there be prevailing. Uh, they don't have anything written as far as a policy of needing prevailing wage. So that. But I I thought we posed this question in our list of questions or answered it when they gave us a list of questions I remember a prevailing wage question to the group mm -hmm. so i don't you know it my 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 thought is everybody would have come in with their lowest number you know and they would have can everybody hear Perry? I can't hear him. So uh, we, we can ask them again. Can you hear Better me? logistics. Better logistics with this thing. The computer will display the person that's making the biggest noise. So if you'll get interrupted if someone makes noise while you're talking. So the best way to avoid that is if you're not talking, just put yourself on mute and the only person that's talking. Thank you. All right. How much did you miss? <laughs> I can't yeah, tell you you're we're breaking up a little bit. We got about it's a second. <laughs> the, um, no, I, I, I remember they, I don't have the list of questions that we were answering for them, but I know that question was posed about prevailing wage uh, to the committee. And uh, we, I believe we did answer that question to them, but you know, it, as being an estimator from way back in another life, um, we always came in with the lowest number and if there's 
you know, the, the, the requirement for prevailing wage, if it had not been called out as a need, then that would have just been kind of a, a change order. So I, I don't know. I mean, we could ask them again, but I, I would think everybody came in with their lowest number to begin with. It's just in the well, case if that of drove a large discrepancy, then we should just you know make sure that we're comparing everybody you know based on the same same wage rate. Um, I mean it, that that can't be driving that much of a of a you know a difference between the the prices that have come in. It did for them, Sam. Hmm. Well, we should definitely have one follow-up question would be, yeah, what, yeah, what, 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 what rage assumptions are you making? Because um, yeah, if I don't know, maybe it would be um, fine if we, you know, uh, you know, hired a team, you know, that, that paid the minimum, you know, uh, minimum wage. You know, maybe, maybe not. I think that's a good question. That's a good amount. Yeah, I feel funny going with a crew that, you know, paid well below industry standard. Um, I'm not sure if that would fit well. With, yeah, I think with prevailing wage doesn't mean below industry standards and it doesn't mean minimum. You know, in a place like Massachusetts, it means, you know, you're hiring union le electricians at full pricing. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, you know, I wouldn't look at it as being on the cheap. Uh, but I think it's probably worthy of clarification. Yeah, it's it, it's union wage versus non-union. But do you want to ask this to all the bidders, or it sounds like we were already cutting some out? Make well, a I think that's list. a good point. The short the short list, maybe that's a good short list question. Yeah. Yeah. Second interview question when we start interviewing these people. Okay. Um, so the next slide just simply looked in ranking the various options um, at the amount of NPV savings that we said, you know, current tariff escalated to 2% 20 years. No, I'm sorry, I did 5% discount rate, not eight. I don't know. Yeah, it's a 5% discount rate, I apologize. We can change that around. But I think this ranks each of the bids in that order. Um, and this would not include all the landfill only ones and we can come to Richard's analysis in a minute. Um, the average savings per year to the town follow roughly the same order as the other bids. So it gives you an idea of how much per year on average would be saved. Um, this is the one to the extent we had it, uh, the CapEx per kilowatt hour of production, which in my view in the energy world, some people look at it as what is it costing you per kilowatt of capacity is the benchmark. What's the real question is, is what is it costing you per kilowatt of production? So if someone has higher production and a lower cost, it's gonna, that's a better deal than someone with you know, a low cost, but also lower production. So this kind of shows the, the cost again on this one, ranking them. And you know, again, a lot of those X-ray ones include offsite generation. The other ones, we don't have anything because they didn't provide us any cost basis whatsoever to make an analysis. So I think one thing we clearly have to ask them is, you know, maybe you don't want to give us the breakdown of your CapEx, but at least give us a total CapEx number for what you're doing so we can begin to compare a little bit. And this is one, the CapEx just on the per kilowatt of capacity. And, you know, Zulu one or are also our sort of, I think, as I recall, our non-compliant friends. Or maybe, I can't remember, I gotta go back and look at that. So that's the sort of the base analysis that we can start with. There are other analysis we can do. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of this and open up what Richard sent. Can everyone see that? Can everyone see this now? My computer's slow, so yes. um, yep, there we go. Okay. Richard, I was going to suggest um, that maybe if you want to talk us through this, I can scroll through the slides as you tell me to do it. You need to take your mute off. I just went through the, uh, the, the numbers and uh, the quotes and the Tom um, information that Tom supplied and just segregated out the ones that are just uh, land fill only. So um, none of the other options are there. It's just the it's just the the options that are covering the, the landfill. Yeah, and I can I can send a, a neutered section to you in a uh, later so that you can post it. It's, I just wanted to do it this way because I thought when I send it to people, it just make it easier for them to make a comparison to the bidders. But I'll I will do that. Uh, the other thing I did is, um, of course, I seg segregated out what the recs are going to the town and when the recs are going to the uh, the, sub the sponsor. So this, um, you know, you can look at, uh, for instance, you can look at x-ray two and four, and that'll give you an idea what um, what basically what in the ratio between x-ray one and three, you can see, get an idea what the what the ratio is for Rex versus uh, Rex to town versus Rex to the sponsor. And same thing, you can always look at you can look at uh, Foxtrot two and Foxtrot three, and and uh, it gives you that ratio as well. So that's all I did. It's just uh, um, just pulling just the ones that are just exclusively just over the land site landfill. That's all. And um, yeah. And this one here is, um, yeah, this is the average annual savings, just did the same thing. And, you know, you'll see that the, the um, uh, you know, Amresco and, uh, and, and NextGrid both basically had the, had the best ones and it followed by, followed by uh, Encore. And um, so that's just allows you to do that. This one here was a capex. I I have uh, I corrected the the capacity numbers, and so you see that uh, of the ones that we were given a cap numbers, which is a limited number, like Tom said, um, all of them are pretty much in line from the standpoint standpoint of capex versus kilowatt production, with the exception of, of Zulu, which is revision energy. And this is the, this, the same thing, um, uh, CAPAS versus uh, uh, kilowatt capacity. And um, uh, tangent, of course, is the outlier there. And uh, revision is uh, all close behind. But the other, the, the, the tangos, the Charlie and the X-ray are amoroso and, and uh, tangent. And um, tango, oh, which is, who's tango? citizens, they're all running about the same number. So I'm not sure why, didn't get into why Charlie and Zulu are so much different in these, but that's something to raise the question and something maybe we ought to delve in a little bit deeper at some point. Then the, the next ones are just um, the same charts that, uh, that Tom had just pulling out, just pulling out the, the um, um, uh, the ones at the landfill. So it was just made it a little bit easier to see, you know, what's going on with the landfill only sites. The other one I sent um, raised some questions from the standpoint of, um, you know, what's some of the inconsistencies between the bids and. Uh, um, that supported some of the questions that were raised, and I don't know. Um, you know, there's some hiccups with uh, why revision, for instance, is is quoting such low capacity in the lower production. 
uh, question is, you know, are, are they using all the site? Are they using less of the area? Or what's, why are they, why are they making, uh, producing and installing so much lower capacity than the others? Same thing could be said for Encore. So I think it's worth, is there, is there more? I think, I think we can talk a little bit now about, about um, what are the project can you get parameters. Out, Tom? Richard, did you send two different yes, slides? Yes, I did. Yep, I sent one. Yeah, I did. Okay. The one I just sent today. Finding the other one. Hold on a minute. Richard, I think Encore is that low. With 353. So hold on, let me just get this. Are you talking about the production from the, the oh, AC? Here we go. VC? Here or we are go. you talking about from the actual the comparison? Because some of them the discrepancy was in the size, and some of them the discrepancy in this was in the production at a certain size. Right. This is well, this gives you a this one here is, is the, um, both the capacity in blue that they're installing, install capacity, and the production uh, is in the brown. So you can see that you know, Zulu and um, you know, yeah. Revision and Charlie are, you know, why is their install capacity so much lower? And obviously their, their production is also lower. Yeah, but like if you that, look at sure. the ratio between yeah. install capacity and production, hmm. you know, actually um, uh, Revision is pretty high. So, you know, one of the yep. questions I've got is just why is revision? Why are these? Why is Charlie and, and Zulu right? And, and by the way, installing such less capacity than the others. Right, and and, and by the way, uh, that's what the reason why I want to. The only one that they gave us a real um, a simulation, uh, sent the simulation over was uh, Citizen. So I want to see all the other simulations for that reason exactly the reason do they all use the same software simulation software no, we don't know we don't know the only one, one that's used the only software that I, that was citizen used the pv sys which is to me the best software out there but it's not that's not that's not my call uh the others could have used something else okay and probably did the other the other obviously the other function um uh, is the actual equipment itself because let's say PV sys is actually specific, is equipment specific sensitive, okay, based on specifications. Um, so that's what I wanted to see because that's really an important part of this, right? Otherwise, it can be a little bit of a false narrative. Can we really compare apples to apples if they're not using the same software? Um, the, the answer is yes and no. There is. Um, there is a deviation between um, what a helioscope and a PB cis. What, what I'm hoping for is they're either using one or the other. Those are the two most the two major softwares in this industry. Okay, and the only other thing that can screw me up is if uh, you get an Amoresco who might have their own priority. Right yeah, yeah, I'm not, yeah, it's easy for me to say, right? Uh, yeah, and, and that and that could be very, very sophisticated, and I wouldn't really know what that was to do with that, okay? Uh, but I'd really like to see the simulations. I can tell by the simulations uh, by looking at them a lot more, okay? And this is a lot of assumptions that we don't really know how these these figures were created. Yeah. Yeah, that's Richard's point. Like, you know, do we know enough based on what we've been given to compare all these bids, you know, you know, equally against each other? Because uh, this production is all over the place. It's crazy. Um, so, what are the, what what are the assumptions that they've made that are driving this? Um, so this this is just the ratio of of production to install capacity. Yeah. And right. um, well, the previous, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, I'm just taking the values in the previous slide and just ratioing them. You can also, see that, yeah. 
<laughs> also, Charles, there is, we have a D-rate factor in the state too, in this area. So um, that will tell that D-rate as well. And I, I can look at that and say, well, if you're above a 20% D-rate, uh, a, a, a ratio one to two, you might have a problem with what's going on here, okay? That's so a D-rate. Um, it's the, it's the ratio, basically the ratio between AC and DC, okay? What should it be? It's about a 1.15 or so, depending on where you are. In other words, we're a little different than they would be in Presque Isle, okay? Or we're different from Boston. And, and also they have this kilowatt hours per kilowatts. I think you've seen this uh, in the first Amoresco um, uh, when they presented something to us. Um, all that should be in the simulation and will be in the simulation. I looked at, I looked at the ratio, that ratio, and... Um... And between the bids, it ranged between 1.2 and about 1.5. Yeah, see, that, that can be a big difference. Also, you know you want to see if you're interested, I know you'd be interested. Look at the citizens' PV cyst model when you go back through the thing again. And that's, that gives you probably the best, that's probably the best software out there, as far as I'm concerned, with specific um, equipment specific. And you'll take a look, you can go down on their ratios, and it'll be very interesting to you, because that's, and I'm hoping we'd see from the others as well. Yeah, revision had probably the uh, the highest, as you can imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's important because this is what this is what we all base this stuff off. I mean, we can have all the charts and graphs we want, but if if we're looking at stuff that you know that the analysis is completely different, then we've got we've got to consider that. <laughs> Uh, and this is just the capex for capacity. I, I went through and I, I adjusted the um, um, the uh, values for uh, cost and and capacity and and um, uh, corrected them. And then this is shows that Zulu is you know they're all about the same, with the exception of Zulu, which is revision. Same here, capex cost per kilowatt hour production. Yeah. Yeah, same yeah. thing. Zulu's uh, revisions the only one that's the outlier. So you look at the 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 um, watts and some of them are a buck fifty a watt, some buck seventy five, buck seventy eight. You see where the, where they're charging people, and that's what what reflects in, in their in their final analysis too. I'm sure I know it does. I looked at you know if you look at the uh, PPA prices and the discount prices, because if you want to do a simple analysis, you really got a couple of things to look at. If you take all these things aside and, and just deconstruct the thing, you, you just something really simple and just down and dirty. You take the, you take the, um, uh, the the tariff for the first year, and the production levels for the first year, and say who's producing more. Then you say, well, who's got the best discount rate? Who's got the best PPA rate, with or without um, escalator? And you can tell an awful lot just from doing that. I should probably also note in my analysis, when I do the production and the savings and everything going forward and the payments in the town, um, you start with the initial production that they're giving in year one, and then it's degraded at 0.5% per year, which is industry standard. Right. And that will show up in, the, uh, in these, in these uh, uh, simulations as well, of course. This is just, uh, you know, I just not sure how much uh, how much bearing this is going to have on a decision, but I just uh, information is available, so and we asked for it, so I just thought I'd just put together a quick slide on what the what the buyout options were. These are all. I'm not surprised they're pretty much the same because it's a lot of it is a tax driven figure and a financing figure, and everyone's going to be fairly close on it. So it's not surprising that proportionally they're all about the same. Surprising to me was citizens hardly drops at all from seven to 15. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that seems like that's partly, uh, that looks like an artifact of their financing structure where they're making long-term commitments. 
Maybe yes, maybe no. You know, I don't know about the other ones. I know I can tell you Amoresco with their, you know, their financing structure and making fairly long-term commitments as well. So it, I, I don't understand the citizens, but I think, you know, looking at it, you know, when you look at the citizens ones, you know, between this production and cost, it doesn't necessarily appear to be all that attractive. But I think the real, I think the real question in all of this is we, we certainly need more information to evaluate all the bids. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, yeah, it's great. Thank you, Richard, for doing the landfill only. But I think the other thing is, do we, you know, do we, what do we think about the other options? So, when, when, I, when I was thinking about the overall project, I sort of was trying to decide there was like there's three parameters that I think it would really help to narrow down. Um, one of which is um, what makes sense in terms of the project? Is it just landfill only? Partly because informed by what we've heard from Sam and from uh, and from Tom. Um, there are options out there to buy into large, cheap projects that are not necessarily town-based, um, that are going to probably be better than the economics that we're going to get on our landfill side. However, from a land use point of view, you're never going to use that landfill for anything. To be able to get an NPV positive project on your landfill is a bonus because it's like it's, it's for, you know, you're not going to be able to do that any other way. So from a land use perspective, I think that makes a lot of sense. And if adding some next to it makes sense too, eh, maybe. But but for me, when I was looking at it, thinking, how do you really meet uh, town energy requirements most cost effective, most flexibly, and have the best uh, land use? It came back to, well, cover your cover your cap landfill. It can't you can't do anything else with it, and it's 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 net positive. So do that. Um, and and then the other one was also just long run. Should the town own this sooner rather than later? Uh, it's a good, valuable asset. Town's got really low cost of capital. It's probably going to stay low for quite a while yet. And, you know, low maintenance. Uh, I think it'll do better if it owns it sooner rather than later, if you plan for it. That's my own, my own bias. Um, so... And then same with the with the recs. With the recs, I, I think if we're building solar, the town expects us to be retiring retiring them. That's part of the green bit to it. Um, so I think you have to choose recs. You have to choose this project site, and you have to choose a, 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 a long term ownership asset strategy. And you choose a lot of them. I just sort of went through those three and gave you my own opinions on them. But I think if you narrow it down, so we come to some sort of consensus on keep the Rex, don't keep the Rex, how long do you want to own it and how, and what's the, what's the shape of the project um, and why um, we'll, we can get there faster, better apples to apples. John, thank you. That's a good analysis. Uh, to go back to the first one, one of my other, the, the other factors I think that, that uh, have, has been mentioned, but I'm sure everybody thought about is that um, if we, there's, there's, a, there's certainly a finite timeline to all of this at some point. And um, if we start moving into areas that will be more difficult for the town and for us, we may miss those timelines. Whereas on the other side, if we, let's say we had another RFP just for those who are here as a bonus for their own solar projects that are a lot more mature than ours, we'd actually would be getting um, that savings even earlier than our own project. So, and also not taking the risk of losing the, all the allocation, which could which is possible. Um, yeah. Now, with the exception of the of the Amoresco Lewiston option, you know, to me, the only reason to um, consider uh, projects other than just the landfill is if they look they might be viable that they could be an add-on later on. Yeah. You know, if 
if some if one of the proposals uh, is that you know hey this is a good idea that we can possibly you know we think it's feasible and it's a good idea that it could be could supplement the current landfill then that might give that quote or that bid uh, an, a slight advantage um, you know the the Amresco Lewiston project I mean that that's clean and one of the questions I've got about that is uh, you know the amount of energy that we're, we're using uh, we're getting from that is so much that we are we going to exceed the amount that we can from the town or is that still under the limit no still under the limit and besides the, yeah yeah that'd be we'd have to we would that analysis would be done by Amoresco or anybody else who would win this that particular side of the bid let's say okay from, from the way I look from the way I looked at the Amoresco analysis they kind of said you know, landfill, landfill, plus taking some of the additional site, plus Lewiston. I think what they did is they sized it so it would be within the town's limits. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it basically what they're saying on one level is you can do the landfill plus Lewiston and get your limits, or you can not do the landfill and we can do it all up in Lewiston and we're going to deliver you the same amount of power. So it looks to me like they've sized that for the town consumption requirements. Charles, do you, do you understand the the uh, the idea of subscriptions anyway? How that works with these different community solar projects? The uh, and I'll mention to you, not, not to um, assuming that you don't, but um, you know, say you got a five megawatt project somewhere else, okay, in the CMP territory, including Lewiston or somewhere else. They would subscribe to whatever they wanted off that. They didn't have to give you, they can give you, you, they, you buy as much power as you need, you'd be one of those subscribers, okay, to that particular power. That's how the structure works. Yeah. And so I think. Do we think that they're giving us a better deal on the landfill by doing the Lewiston project? Because I suspect we should maybe just concentrate on the landfill now. And then I think that this is another really attractive option we should investigate going forward mm -hmm. is getting some kind of remote contract um, yeah. for solar. The question that you, the, 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 the thing is what you don't know is they're clearly, Amoresco is clearly saying they want if you do the lowest and we can give you a lower overall price and meet your needs and that option. And the question is, do the landfill only and then you get, then go to someone else and do, you know, if you do landfill with any one of these bidders and then you go to other bidders with another remote site, is the combination of those two going to be better than doing it with one person? And we just have no idea of knowing that right now. Okay, what about that for a question? Hey, Amoresco. I mean, it's a legitimate question. Are you pricing in the Lewiston project? If we do the landfill, will it change the, the, the any of these options in the future? I don't think that's a bad question. No. They gave us a landfill only bid, right? right. So we have that. Yeah, yeah we've got that's, that. Yeah, see, I'm assuming that they are separate, but you know, Tom's point, is 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 valid we should really explore that if that's the case yeah. because what they would do what they would be doing is you know if you look at it from the financing standpoint it's you know the sort of the same ppa credit and you know you know and let's face it you look at the towns in maine <coughs> and the consumer base cape elizabeth has got to be one of the best credit standpoints for the off taker you know we're going to pay for the power you, know, you get in some of the other towns you got to ask some questions they really can be able to afford it i was going to i didn't want to distract but i want to also the, the one other option that i think we can can have an opinion on sooner rather than later is escalator versus no escalator yeah that was some of my read some of the questions out there so, so okay. I, I have a, a view on that actually, partly just from looking yeah. at town politics. My own view is that you'll be better off if you do you get the best price with an escalator and a, and the best price with a buyout in seven years, and you plan for that. The part of the reason is mm. if you put a flat cost for your 
for a big flat cost in the in the town budget, and you keep a flat cost for seven years, mm-hmm. people start depending on that. No. that. That flatness, and it's it's it, you're better off to have it mirror the, a little bit more like what the what's happening in the market, um, <laughs> and, and, and you know because the. By the time you get to year five, people forgot that you'd locked it in only for seven years. Yeah, but the only thing is, the only thing with that is, and I'll give you an example just the other way, okay? Okay. Um, I, I work with a couple of municipalities now, and one of the f- first things that came up on a subscriber level was, what, what is this 2%? How do you justify it? We don't, isn't this kind of speculation that the power will go up or go down? At the same time, how do we know that? I got questioned big time about that. Well, right, but you know, CMP's rate rates of you know, historical rates are pretty clear. <laughs> it's been a it's been a sub, you know significant ten year upward trend for some time. Well, I've done I've done the demog- de- demographics on that stuff, and it's not it's not true in the supply side. Where it goes up is on the delivery side. So again, you can, you can look at it any way you want to look at it. You can justify it. There's nothing wrong with putting in an escalator. It's just that, you know, there, there, are, there are a couple ways of looking at this thing. And oh. you, need a, you need a, you know, I'm just saying that, uh, you know, I don't think it's, we should look at, when we look at apples to apples, for instance, where you've got, a, you've got one, that 8%, like, like, okay, so next grid, I remember did an 8%, 2% escalator, okay? That's a pretty good, good, good bid for, for a for, uh, fixed VPA. Um, a lot of, and then you have the other side where they would do, it's not even a PPA that way, it's a discount off the, um, the tariff rate, which gives you um, a different look. It does, it, 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 no matter how you look at it, you don't take the risk of going up or down. Okay, so so there's more than just a escalator on a PPA there. You've got others. You've got another one who's given you an, with no escalator and an escalator. We want to get them in one group and the other and say, okay, with no escalator, what are you bidding? With this up escalator, what are you bidding? So we know what the the comparative value is. I know. No, no. Do we know what the uh, what the maintenance cost of this is if the town owns it? I mean, is that a significant number? Is that a significant unknown? Solar is really cheap to maintain. That's part of the beauty of it. That's why you could put it on rooftops. I think the town would would probably have to replace the inverter if, yeah. if we purchased it. So that would be a big cost. But otherwise, I think it's pretty low. Well. Get an O and M contract before you go out there. I use about a two percent in my models. Two percent of the of the uh, of the capex every year. Snow removal, uh, mowing the lawns, anything like that. Anything that's yeah. I mean, it it really is. It, it's it's not free, but it's not expensive equipment to maintain. Mm. Yeah, your big your biggest expense is you're gonna have to replace your inverters every yeah. seven to ten years. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, I. I actually think we ought to consider looking at the NPV of the project with a buyout replaced by a bond payment at seven years because the cost of capital goes down and you still get the same pretty much the rest of the same you know, the electricity for those next 13 years at a fixed, probably lower cost. Because capital, ca- capital cost for the town is going to be low, lower than 8%. The, the the pricing on the town bonds is like three or four percent these days yeah. if you're going to place bonds. I mean, yeah, you, know, you hate to say it, but if you wanted to go down that route, in some ways it would argue if you want to save even more money, is you don't hire someone to, to you you just you just do it. You own the credits. You hire someone to build it and you finance it yourself and issue you know you issue a couple million of bonds to do it. And that would drop your price down even more because I can tell you everyone here is probably quoting an unlevered cost of capital of eight to 10%. Right. But you, you, you still want to put it in a special purpose vehicle to take the tax 
piece. Yeah. That's why. That's why. That's why I'm saying seven year buyout to replace it with a bond payment. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's one of the better long-term assets you could hold. Yeah. I can look at trying to model some of that a little bit. That um, may stretch my modeling skills, but I'll give some thought to it. But I, I, again, I think this is kind of the, the, the back of the envelope will give the answer pretty quickly. Because right. once you know, you know, you, once you model in what the bond cost is for, for, the, for the buyout price in seven years and compare that to what you're paying on a PPA, you, that whatever that delta is, it's going to roll, you know. So. Anyway, the, to me, that seems to be, would be the optimal financing structure for a town. Capture the tax benefits, buy it out as soon as possible with your lower cost of capital. Can we have that and make that dis discussion, have that discussion, make that decision after we get the yeah, yeah. final well, answer? I, well, I'm saying if, that's, if that turns out to be the optimal structure, it has implications for how we compare all the bids. That's all. So I just realized when you buy out the project, the recs come back with it, I assume. You, you would get, you would have to, if you own it, you would be getting everything. Right. From it. So, yeah. so the town might decide it's actually indifferent on the recs. And then after seven years, it'll buy it out and have it going forward. So essentially to pay for it, you give up the green, the, the, the green benefit. And then, but then for the remainder of the life of the project, um, you have them. That, that's a, that's another possible sensible approach. I do think on the other thing, deciding about keeping the racks or not is to the, you know, to the town, what's most important? Is it cost savings? Is it being able to claim that it's green by keeping the racks? Um, and then having to deal with managing that, or is, you know, you know, our, you know, are people in the town going to get the nuance that, Hey, we got a solar thing on our landfill. Are they going to understand the rec stuff and who owns it or who doesn't? We will not be able to say we have a green power if we don't have the recs. That's what they're putting in. I know yeah. some solar developers are putting it in contracts. It's, yeah. I mean, it, it's it, not just a nuance. It's a yeah. real thing. I, I, I think you want to have a plan to say when or you're going to own the recs if you're not going to own them from the outset, because you, you want to be able to say that you have green power, because I think if you don't do that, you just got a public relations nightmare on your hands. Yes, sir. I mean, it's hard to explain to people even what a rec is. And exactly. it's... I know it's my job, and I, it's still still confusing. To and, and if someone wants to get up at, a, at one, of the, concern, one of the town meetings, hey, hey guys, the, you've got to consider whether you have uh, have green energy. Just go and take pictures of the of the solar project and show it to the world. I mean, really, I mean, it's it, you know, I'm, I, you know, it's fine if that's where you want to go with it. Um, oh, and you're it, right; it's either dollars you, and cents or holding on to the wrecks. If and, you leave and, it and, confusing, you're going to pit people who care only about low cost to pit the, against people who really only care about green. And we're in the middle of it. We don't want to be. Um, I would. And there's both of this. Love to see us recommend to the town council that we a, a scenario where we're keeping the wrecks, or I think it would be acceptable in seven years to. Um, to own the project and then get the recs after then. I mean, the state of Maine is going towards a future where we're planning to be 100% renewable. That's the RPS by, you know, a date far off. But if we're planning to provide a large portion of the town's power without, without the recs, then we're not moving in that direction. Um, I was surprised how much they're worth. I mean, how much, what the difference in prices? I mean, I was, I didn't expect to see the differences that much. I mean, I, 
and probably, other people probably are, but I was really but amazed. It's like a 30 a bill. The price difference was. <laughs> They're that's, why was, that's why it was attractive to maybe let, let, let sell them for seven years and pay for the project. Well, look, you know something, it may be an interesting thing to, I, I always believe in dumbing it down and just making a presentation to the council at the end, but it may be an interesting question for the council. Well, we, we asked already, right? We asked Jamie when he came to visit, we said, this is a, because I think this is a huge, piece of our mandate that we don't have. We don't have, we don't, like Cape Elizabeth doesn't have a, have a, something like we're trying to be 100% renewable. Lots of towns have that, but we don't have that to fall back on. We've just been told to go do energy projects. And so mm -hmm. yeah, we don't energy, really have to right. So yeah, I, I, we're not a renewable company. What's wrong? What's wrong with us here? Right? I, I started that conversation with Jamie. We were going to set up a time to meet. Oh, and that was sort of in the middle of the short-term rental um, ruckus, and then uh, the pandemic hit, so we have not circled back up yet. So I was well, at well, the beginning of that conversation, yeah, but never got meantime, to it. In the meantime, John, let's just get the bids in for both sides, and and at some point you can you can approach them. I, I'm I'm kind of neutral. It, it depends on what they want. I mean, there is a clear I cut. Think, I think it's a lot easier, and I haven't, I was, I just, my life has been a little crazy trying to work full time with a three year old with me all the time. Um, but um, it would be easiest if it turned out that the project, the best project with and without Rex was the same project, yeah. because then you could really say, this is our recommendation, and this is how much it costs with the Rex, this is how much it costs with the yeah. Rex. Yeah. But I'm not sure that's going to be the case. I haven't looked at it yet. I'm going to relook at it. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's a good point. So one of the thoughts, though, is if we do get down to a short list of bidders, that you would present to them essentially exactly those requirements, that we want it with Rex or uh, and a seven-year buyout uh, or, with, or without the Rex, thing, but with a seven-year buyout, give us your best prices. Mm-hmm. We can make that as a tiebreaker, especially very easily. So then you could got basically Rex all the time, Rex after seven years, but you end up with the Rex. I, I think mm. I I think we want to have the Rex at some point. You know, do you really believe that? <laughs> I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but are we in agreement that we just want to just want to deal with landfill only projects? Yeah. And do we need more information before we can narrow the field? Uh, oh, sorry. Um, I, I think we need some more information. I think there's, um, I, I think there's some big gaps in the production things that just aren't making sense. So the more that we can clarify some of that, and then we got to check back with the bidders to say, you still stand behind the, your bids. Yeah. yeah. So well, I, I think, think there's some, say, Charlie, I think there's some winners and losers here already, but but I think we, we, we we're asking questions of everybody, so let's do it for for a little bit of time and see what happens. Okay. Well, when you go back for the questions, should we tell them that we're just dealing with with just the landfill only project? So concentrate on that. Yeah, I like to do that. You know, so they don't dilute their resources and put time in on ones that we're not really going to consider anymore. The only other thing to do would be some of them, you know, like revision is, do you say landfill only, but, you know, are you doing something else in the state that we could be a buyer of and what does that change it to see if there's another Amoresco like bid out there on that one? Yeah, there is. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I know that they're doing other things in the state on that one because my coworker is considering participating in some kind of community solar thing with them. Um, yeah. If we ask that of them, we may want to ask that of everyone. Well, that's what yeah. I'm saying. You'd ask it of everyone. Yeah, no, that's the, that's what we should do. And do you want to do it, but Tom, do you want to do it in conjunction to, I, I get what you want to, it's sort of the bundling theory. It was, but it was my, my fe feeling originally that maybe we would do this as a separate RFP or, as the, or just invite the people who were, doing it, uh, this RFP to, to, to do it that way. Otherwise, I can tell you there's two or three people already approached me on it the yeah. same way so that are in this bidding process. 
So we, any way you want to do it, it's fine. Sam, are those, are, are those people who are looking for buyers or people who are looking to, to uh, developers who want a large project? Or is it people like Portland who are getting buyers together? No, no, no. It's one of uh, it's the people who are bidding. One of our seven bidders, the two okay. of them, Got have it. come to me and say, "Can I, can I, can I bid on, on the uh, on Remaining. that site next time if we have that? If we want to consider that as an adjunct, as a supplemental." Is the is the Portland group still open for more participants? Uh, no. Is there going to be a round two, uh, second round of that? No idea. The the gentleman um, Perry, you were going to invite. Um, what is his name from uh help me out here charlie charlie, charlie. Um, yeah and yeah. and he's he's he is a, a, his group is in charge of sorry carrie i know you don't like this guy I know. It's okay. <laughs> he was in charge of, of this consortium industrial thing and he, he said to me that chip that ship had sailed that's all he knows at this time okay um, and that's all I could get from him. But again, I, I, I think that, um, by the way, that consortium may not, have, uh, but we had, there's plenty of people out there, even beyond that scope of seven that we have. One of the things, and I, I, I sit with these developers at these meetings, part of this little caucus we have, they all are now going, where the heck are we going to get our, our, our um, subscribers? They're all going to want to bid on on whatever excess energy they have, they can get. Yeah, I I, I kept thinking to myself is do the landfill. It's it's teed up. We've got bids for. We're going to do landfill only and do a subsequent bid up for the remaining capacity once we've got the landfill secured. By the way, here's another thing to think of as well. By the way, um, in in if you subscribe to someone, let's say outside of the landfill, you're you're basically you're picking winners or losers. You may pick a loser, okay? So, so, so let's say that somebody is, is in the process and he, he tries to sign you up, they, their IA doesn't look good, they've lost the allocation either in any B program or the auction. On the other hand, you could, you'll see a list of bidders who have won the auction. Now that could be a different price too as well. So, you don't have to be picking winners or losers right now. You may want to wait and say, okay, here's a list of people who have actually done their projects, they're ready to build, and let's, let's get them together and let's get a bid from these guys. But the way I read the Amoresco option is it's still the net metering on the landfill plus another site that's dedicated to us, and it's not in the other program. That's the yeah, way no, it doesn't one. have to be. The, the point is that you're right, Tom. Is there, there you right now? You can do an NEB project, okay? Right now, and but there are there are people. For instance, if you look in the queue, there are people who already have done their IA and they're ready to build. There are other people. Most people haven't. So whether you wait for the auction or not, the auction is coming up hopefully shortly. You're going to be able to pick a winner. Or you can take from that list of people who are ready to go, and you can just say, "Look at the people who've done their IAs; they're ready to go, including Amoresco, let's say." And and these are the people we're going to do because they can build for us; they can build right away, and we can save right away. Yeah. So, so whatever you guys want to do. <laughs> For the future, in terms of what, what, good. Yeah, good. For the future, um, how much capacity is not on the landfill but not cutting trees down able to be used? I don't remember. What do you mean, how much capacity? So there was the landfill plus the adjacent site. How much could you put on the adjacent site without cutting trees down? Is it what, is, what do you mean by adjacent site? Well, I thought there was the landfill and then some other space that could be used. Uh, at the moment, it's really only the landfill area. Okay. Anything else, all the other plants have been called cutting some trees down. Okay. I think there's Are one out around the building or something? Or roof roof somewhere. Yeah. yeah. I thought there was some spot near where the bulk waste is hmm. yeah they were looking a little bit around the bulk waste and then yeah. some down by the sort of the parking area by the town shed mm -hmm. 
Okay. That I assume kind of was probably off limits. Yeah. <sighs> Might not be worth doing anything with that anyway. But um, is there senior housing in Cape Elizabeth, sort of low income senior housing? Anywhere? Good question. <laughs> Harry, that's you. Is there any low income here? I don't know if there's any low income. Okay. Because <laughs> in Newtown, we had some and we got, we had a project to get them solar. So yeah. I don't know if there's yeah. another, like us. So, so interesting, interesting question. Maybe I'm going to raise a bigger question. And I think we've already thought about this a little bit. Um, you know that the other part of this thing is to, is to try to bring the rest of the community in this, right? As you, I think that's what you're alluding to. Um, a lot of times, like in Connecticut, they had the low income housing got an extra adder for a subsidy. That's why for the, for the solar development as they did in Massachusetts. I'm not sure that works here yet, it doesn't. But, um, but there are a couple programs, one of them, I, I, well, there's only one program is the 250 megawatt program, which is the one that has the big subscriber program. And so again, picking winners or losers, whoever wins that auction, we should go after them to come back here and, and sign everybody else up in town. Including low income housing, if we can find some. <laughs> That'd be a good phase, phase two, right? Um, yeah, yeah. After, after we get our, 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 our town usage. Yeah, that's so I think maybe later it's, on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I love the idea of, of you know, tapping into, you know, a solar farm for any for excess power that the town needs. Yeah. Um, you know, that would be a nice way to. to you know, get the, the the rest of the power, but uh, but yeah, I think maybe for next steps we you know make sure that we get uh, maybe additional information from folks that can um, you know give us that clarity and you know, that you know the prices are as how you equalized as possible. Um, and those things that I think that we might need to do that are you know what are those assumptions behind uh, behind, behind behind production? And I think um, Sam, when you had said that uh, you know. As far as you can tell, all of the bidders were basically going to be using the same type of equipment. Um, but for that reason, their production is, kind of, is, is, is not, you know, uh, levelized. Um, so that, and of course, in the, the wage, the wage piece, um, and if their other assumptions have changed in the era of coronavirus. Um, and there things that I need from folks to come equalize these these bids a little bit more. Say that again. I just muted. I, I I can't I can't remember if the the bidders that have proposed um, pricing that is a discount to the um, tariff rate. Did they also provide pricing that was um, a price? One because did. One didn't. A couple did. They, they're mixed. Okay, so so if I remember right, um, I think the uh, I think uh, citizens had the discount. I think that some of the others had 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 both. I know Encore had both. Because that's um, an issue in terms of comparing the pricing favorably, like fairly, is that we have we basically have to have an estimate of what we think the tariff rate is going to be in order to do that. Of yeah, but again, yeah. I think the, the biggest thing about a discount is that, you know, again, you can argue whether it, it gets you less or more in the end, but the point is, it's just, it's just the, case, the case, the point in case is that it's less risky to the town or anybody else, okay? Now, whether that is worth the risk and you're going to lose in the end, as most people have said here, they think the trend is going to go up. That's one thing, but does the town want to take risks? The less, the rest risk list you put on the town, the more probably, the more um, uh, amiable they are to maybe doing business. Uh, maybe they're risk averse. It's just a decision you make based on that. Yeah, I think you could talk about the risk in two ways, right? Because with the discount to the tariff, you at least know they're always going to be less than the CMP rate. 
but if they have a fixed price, you know exactly what the price is going to be. And so you don't right. know if it's going to be it, a good it, deal or it, not. But um, in general, for municipalities, uh, a fixed price is considerably more favorable because unlike businesses, towns only go raise money once a year. Having flat known costs is actually a huge benefit for financing towns. But, but the point is, John, it's a decision that you that you you make based on you as long as the pros and cons. And I think you're right. Uh, yeah. it, it is. But I'm, what I'm saying is, it's not it's not as equal decision a town versus a business in terms of the benefit okay. of a flat versus a floating rate. Okay. Yeah. the the real the real political the real political issue is you sign it, and ten years from now, for whatever reason, the CMP rates are falling, and you're considered kind of out of the money you're paying more than the market rate you're stuck in the contract yeah that's the risk and that's where you kind of come back to the buyout stuff and mm -hmm. you know yeah you know i think as sam said you know you know you know my view is more likely to go up you know the commodity cost is going down everywhere it's going to continue to go down but you know maine the most of the cost is in the transmission and the delivery yeah. of it to the to your house or to the sit to the city and the town and you know those costs of maintaining the grid are not fundamentally changing and they're more likely to go up and i've done a you know i've done a lot of work on the potential you know, this argument of taking cmp into public ownership and even in those cases they say you know you do it the best you're going to come up with in those cases is that maybe 20 years from now, the costs will go down. So, you know, I, I think about this whole thing, it's it, it, it just way beyond all this. This solar thing, it just keeps giving us all the work we want to do. We first started, we were talking about energy efficiency and all the things. We've got solar for, for, the, for, the, for the landfill. We've got solar for the community. We've got, we've got a lot of good stuff to work on here, I think. So do we, do, but do we need to ask the people who bid a discount to the, um, to the tariff rate? Do we need to ask them for a fixed price? Like, are, are they gonna get, it, it didn't occur to me that that was gonna come back from the RFP. So <laughs> do, are, are we okay, like evaluating them? on that basis or do we need to ask them for a fixed price or i i think we should because i think what we're also saying here is 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 we're looking more i think we're probably looking more favorably on on fixed price contracts at this point so if you can get a fixed price from everybody you can compare apples to apples and if i'd been a discount and i knew they were picking on fixed price i'd love to have a chance to get at least my fixed price in to be in the be the ball game yeah, yeah, okay, two PPAs, PPAs. I think there's only one, might be only one that only did did the discount rate alone. I think that's citizens, I'm not that's sure. Citizens, yeah. Citizen. Yeah, Who's been, am I right about that? Attractive yeah. in the first place. Yeah, so we could ask them, I guess, if that's, that's, that's preferable. That is an apples to apples question. <laughs> You still with us, John? <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I, I've had I've had cough and allergies for the last month because of spring. Was, I'm off. I'm fine though. No fever. No nothing. I'm good. Good. <sighs> yeah, we just got you here. We might as well keep you for a while. You know, yeah. we don't want you to. <laughs> Do we have a decent short list at this point? Are we able to um, eliminate some of these, uh, the outliers based on what you've got? This is like the, the German firm at HPV. Um, you know, we don't need to go back to them. Um, but for the others, I think we've, you know, we've, we, we know at least kind of who we want to keep in, in the hunt, right? So uh, we, we can also go back to everybody and just say, look, 
we're coming down to the, you know, after looking at all the bids, the projects we really want to make evaluate now look like this. It is landfill only, um, fixed, fixed price PPA um, with uh, your best price on a seven year buyout. And, you know, uh, if you want to do with or without Rex, fine, but we'll, you know, we'll consider both, but you can do, you can pick, you can pick one. I think we already got the information until we fill in the, and we fill in the, uh, uh, some of the, the, uh, the stuff, the questions we have, I think we'll already have that information. I don't think we have it from everybody. I think we've got it from maybe a couple of bidders to fill out all of that. Okay. I, I don't remember. I thought everybody gave us pretty much everything except for, you know, um, yeah. All right. We'll look at uh, we so, CapEx numbers for a lot of people. Yeah. As well as drilling down on the production numbers. Uh oh. This is not my house. My house. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Did, did anyone know the equipment specifications in terms of production? It was, there, was there, I didn't see much difference. I, I didn't look in detail, though. Well, they were all tier one stuff. But there were definitely, definitely differences in, in, in wattages, some bifacial, some mono. Um, so uh, I think yeah. some were, were higher, higher producing panels for, you yeah. know. Yeah. Which uh, will account for some of that production, of course. Well, look, you, you know something, John? There's some questions already out there. I've, I've put a few in and Tom's got a few. Um, just put in the questions you want. How's that? And then if we get, and I know some of mine are redundant, so he, he'll, Tom will take a couple of mine out and, and uh, you know, we'll go from there. I mean, you have a right to ask any questions you want and we can go back, we can uh, make an assessment in the next couple of weeks or so, come back to the table and, um, so I, 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 I think the question right now in some respects is, is based on what we've seen are, are, are there any that we would just flatly eliminate? And we've sort of had talked a little bit about that. And that if, if this is a discussion that you don't want to be part of, Tom, that that may um, make sense. Cause, cause I, then, I think we should eliminate the one that is, um, didn't submit a compliant bid. The we told people, yeah, have, have, we okay. told people that That's they fine. had to submit a compliant bid and they didn't, and so let's just get rid of them. And it didn't seem like they had a lot else going for them anyway. Uh -huh. So in that in that respect, we we should go back with specific questions as well as saying, you you know, you're on our short list. We're specifically interested in your best price on a project that looks like the, on on this option within the project range we described before. So you're saying, John, the next six people should all be on the short list? Well, uh, at this point, I, uh, or should we negotiate say, with a real short list? Because there is a difference. There is a, uh, some differences there. Okay, I think we're a little, so, a little slow. So we're, but we're, really. we're trying to get to an apples to apples comparison on the project we've now sort of started leaning toward. Yeah, and so this the 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 individual questions will make sure we can get to an apples to apples comparison and then we're telling them you know stand behind your bed and or sharpen your pencil for landfill only flat price um ppa with and and a seven anticipate a seven-year buyout Is any of that precluding our ability to answer questions from the council? For example, I think we should say with an option for a seven year buyout. Yep. Right. Because, because we, right. I think that the, the council will want to have that as an option rather mm. than a like definite. That's right. Also, uh, rest, true. Rest although I, th I think we can model out what the, what the the value is like i said if you assume yeah. you, you bond out the buyout price at a, you know, a small range of of capital cost and and switch that for bond payment versus ppa payment and i think it also think about with and without rex yeah and that leave that option not leave that variable on the table too because we obviously get that question 
Yep. I mean, there's there's quite a bit of information, you know, from the standpoint of capital cost and stuff that we didn't get from from you know a number of them, and uh, it'd be nice to get that information as well before we get too we we start narrowing the field down too much. So what I'm suggesting is that we go back to those where we're missing that information because it's different missing information for each one. Say, we, we, we like your bid, we've, we've winnowed the field some, we've also narrowed our project description. We need this information for you and we're specifically interested in that information for a project that looks like this. And if you wanna sharpen your pencil, your best price for that project that looks like this. We need that, your specific information and pr flat pricing with or without Rex for a project that looks like this. Sounds good. Do we need to do, talk about problem? anything else? <laughs> what was that, Barbara? <laughs> <laughs> I think we've um, discussed yeah. this. Do we need to talk about anything else or can we move forward <laughs> yeah. the next steps? Who which is? <laughs> I think I've got a bunch yeah. of questions. What I'll do is I'll circulate, I'll do a little bit of an update. I'll circulate a list of the list of questions, which is broken down by individuals. And then if we could everyone to chime back on that, you know, in the next week or so, then the question is, how do we, how do we give those, get those questions to the bidders? I assume, do we give them to Perry and then he goes back to each one? I could prepare a form of email or letter for each one, but they should probably come from Perry to come, you know, send back out as the point person. Yes. That'd be great. Agreed. Yeah, I can, that, that's no problem. I can send them out. Okay. The, uh, the only other one I was questioning is I had heard something earlier about uh, lack of experience with Encore. So are, are, are we cutting them out of the list as well? I doubt it. They get some pretty attractive pricing. Okay. Well, I think the... Are they one of the two that he was using tie and bond? As engineers, there are two, yeah, two firms use time bond. Yeah. yeah. I've got a typo here. Actually, let me go back to Encore for a minute. I'm just mm -hmm. opening up my spreadsheet. Um, well, they've done a lot of projects. I'm surprised they did very little on landfill myself. I think they've got, they have two landfill projects for 7.9 megawatts. Okay. Like so, you know, on average, those are pretty, fairly decent sized projects. So, I thought their bid was one of the clearest ones to look at and interpret. Yeah, your, your problem with their, their bid, Char uh, Charlie, was the fact they didn't give us a, a, a CapEx cost, which I've already asked them a question, is one of the questions. We need to get that from them. I'm looking at the calendar that we set, set the timeline for ourselves. Next step, at least the latest milestone, is the our evaluation is complete by May 15th, uh, which is six weeks from now or so. Um, yeah. is, and then the next step is the final bid selection time council approval. So I suppose this back and forth that we'll have at least once more with the questioners um, is in that period between now and May 15th. So what we probably have like another. You know, should we give people time, you know, two, three weeks to get back? Um, or are we giving them enough, enough homework that they're going to have to, you know, I would have, think, you know, I would think if we can try and get the, I would think if we can try and get the questions out to them next week, we give them like 10 business days to get back. They, they've already done most of the work. It's really just sharpening their pencil and telling us some numbers that they already produced but didn't give us. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. Good. No. Yeah. So let's take our questions uh, next week. 
this week and and and, and next. Um, and then yeah, I, yeah, and then yeah, I, mean, I think I think we can either send it out to everybody or to a, a select number. Um, our, we're just starting with what seven now anyway. Um, as long as we have fifty to deal with, which is good. No, we're down to six. That, we're up to now. Six. Okay, good. So six is is like a really manageable number. Um, can, yeah, and then and then in the meantime, do we want to entertain uh, any sort of proposals for maybe you know um, uh, non-town building solar, um, you know, solar power? You know, for example, for the uh, community solar or for the, um, the larger facilities uh, that we could subscribe to. Is that, I think I think that's a step like that. But I don't think we can do that, that until we put yeah. this to bed in terms of what the project size is. Mm -hmm. My view would be to ask them for the landfill and ask them, I would just because we can get more information to ask them about the community stuff and just, you know, what else is out there that they might offer. And the other th question that was on my mm -hmm. mind and looking at it is also, you know, you have, you know, revision, you know, putting a free solar car charger at the school. Not that that, you know, mm -hmm. any of these things make any difference. Someone else had um, something along those lines. Xcrit, I had something like that too, I think, Tom. I think Revision also had a, a solar project on the middle school or something. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 You know, yeah, you know, you know, yeah, Nextgrid had three EV charging stations. Yeah. I think they want to get involved in the community uh, with the community as well. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think we, I, I think that sometimes I think sometimes Tom. I think I don't want to bite off too much either. I think we we have a, a this is a lot of work right here to get this done. And um, if you want to ask about, if you want to add in that part about community solar, fine. I think we should stick to one thing though. <clears throat> Yeah, I think land, land, land next, land, landfill first, um, and then kind of the community solar, um, maybe third, and then you know, after the after the uh, landfill, I think about you know, how to supplement our, our you know, the town has an end. Yeah. Are we going to um, ask about like the bid that Amoresco did with the the Lewiston site too? Ask about that's the I, that's the community okay. solar. Well, it's over discussion. I don't know if we don't want to, but it, it's open for discussion. I mean, um, it, well, it's just a, if we ask people now, it kind of changes the bid a little bit. That's the only thing. It's just okay. that's the only that was just my two cents. Well, you know, earlier um, we were we were saying we were going to ask if that was going to actually change the price of the landfill project. And that would be a specific thing to ask Amoresco. I don't think that that's un, that's unfair to ask them. Okay. okay. Oh, we don't want to ask. Well, has already given detailed costs on their options for the landfill only. Yeah, I okay. think the only question is, were we getting a discount on the landfill when when it was paired with the other, or were we getting a discount on the Lewiston thing? I don't know, but I think we already have a price. If we're just doing the landfill, we have a price for that. Okay. okay. And that's that's uh, set with that one to bed. Yeah. <sighs> All right, are we just settled out for the moment? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I will try and get the question list done. I'm gonna certainly buy, uh, I might be able to get it done tomorrow, but certainly um, over the weekend. And then if people could get back, and what I'll do, it'll be sort of questions for everyone, questions for specific people that we've got. And if everyone could go through it, make sure we're in line on it. And then I can make up the individual ones for each party. Mary? Yep. Good. Let's just do it. Yeah, good. I'm sorry, Tom. Tom, I'll, yes. I'll, um, I'll neuterize the, um, the stuff I got and attach it to your PowerPoint presentation. Put those slides okay. there. Okay. I'll also um, uh, take the information you just sent me a few minutes ago uh, before the meeting. And I'll add that to the spreadsheet and I'll send you back a spreadsheet that's got your original tab on it and then 
the, the changes that I made on a separate okay. tab. Okay. And then you can select whether or not you want to delete the original or just make the stuff I, my changes on your, on the array option tab will all be in red. Okay, great. So then you can just I change it all to it. the black if you want to and use that or um, it'll have all, it'll have all the changes that I made. Thank I you. For changed any, I haven't changed anything on any of your tabs. Okay. So the tabs are all, all uh, virgin stuff from you. Okay. Thank you for checking that. <laughs> I hate building models. Well, a lot of numbers. Yeah. And with, and with Excel, you can make a lot of mistakes in an awful hurry. I know. I know. That's why I always hired other people to do it for me. Yeah, like building your checks. Yeah. Well, I know we talked about having some grad students help out with this at one point, but if we're an interview of our next project, you can um, make that happen. Yeah. But thank you, yeah, Scott, for your your um yeah, you know, your your hard hard work kind of getting us to this point. Okay. Um, I'm just, I know there's lots of there's more work to do, but um, yeah, I I I know I know we'll have a great a grateful um you. You know, once it's all said, then we can proudly proclaim our Thoreau Landfill project. Um, if I, I can even see the ribbon cutting, you know, in my head. Like a beautiful, a beautiful, terrific thing. <laughs> um, One other logistic point. Um, are we getting any feedback from any of the, our, our bidders that uh, maybe they're going to be, uh, this virus thing is slowing their ability to respond? That was going to be one of the questions we're going to ask. I, I did pose that question or something similar about, uh, I'd say maybe two weeks ago. Everybody was still on board at that time, but I, I definitely feel we should, you know, ask it again. Mm -hmm. Perry, did we actually get, I think I asked you know, if we had any hard copies. Did only a couple of the, the firms actually give us what we asked? Um, yes. If they didn't, that makes me kind of, kind of, you know, uh, miss me a little bit, frankly. So we had your know, requirements that um, we, some of them didn't really feel like they needed to hear to. I, if I remember right, we had throttled it back to only doing one copy from the original five that, I think the original request was five. Um, only mm -hmm. one company gave us the five, I don't remember which one. Um, but I did receive the others. Uh, there was a little bit of delay in the mail. But I, I, believe, I believe we have them all now. Guys, does it, does it make one, one a copy? I can come get them from you, Perry, if you want. I thought it might be helpful um, earlier. Maybe at this point we don't need them, but I would love to get my hands on, on those. Yeah. I'm not in the office tomorrow, but I'm there next week. Great, I'll awesome grab them for you and then I can be the, the keeper of those, that I can distribute them to the to folks that want them. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just shoot me an email of what time works best for you or what day and, and we'll get together some at some point. Great, all right. Okay, it's my bedtime. I'm, I'm Are the oldest adjourned? one here. <laughs> Are we adjourned? <laughs> yeah, sure, and, but Sam. Let's work to adjourn. May second. 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 Yep. All right. <laughs> Good job, guys. All right, gentlemen. Good night, everybody. All right. All right. Thank All you, right. Everybody. All right. We'll <laughs> Thanks, Tom.